Okay guys, so today we are going to be taking a look at something that I think a lot of people love looking at, especially from Alaskans, is my brush gun. This is the gun that I carry whether, as you guys are seeing in this video, I'm just out on a short trip to get some, you know, tinder fungus for cooking up, brewing, and, you know, having for this year's bushcrafting season, or whether I'm in the backwoods on a horse, you know, going back into the woods on a fishing trip, going into the woods on a hunting trip, just whatever the situation, this is a bushcrafting, hunting, hiking, you know, just out berry picking kind of gun. And so I wanted to touch on this and kind of discuss with you guys what I carry, especially because in Alaska, I'm sure just like any other state, there is a million and one different opinions. Some people have said they've killed bears with a 45, some have said 9 mil, some swear by 10 mil, some say you need a 500 Smith & Wesson, you know, some people say a 357 is good enough. And I'm just going to share with you guys my opinion and what I carry. Let's jump into it. So let's start off with what I carry. So what you guys see here, and it is fully loaded because yes, I'm out in the same woods that there could be bears in. So I'm not going to unload it for a video, especially if I have to just draw it and use it. So it is fully loaded. But anyways, so what you guys are looking at is a 1980, 1980s model. 29 by Smith and Wesson and this is the 29-C and the reason why I chose this gun is one I love older guns especially older guns that are really quality made like this Smith and Wesson 29 and I love the fact that <clears throat> it's just a really nice old firearm now the reason why I chose the 29 originally I was looking for either a 629 or 29 and the reason why I wanted the 29 family is I like it for a couple reasons one it is a very comfortable gun for me to handle I like the size of the uh overall handle on this gun I feel like I can get a really good one-handed or two-handed grip on it which is important for me in my opinion um, I also what I like though most about this gun is just how smooth the double action is either the 629 or the 29 they both have incredibly smooth double actions that are stiff in the front of the trigger so when you first start pulling it back but once you're about halfway through your draw cycle on that double action pull it gets really smooth really easy to be accurate with and as you guys are seeing in my footage it's just a gun that in double action you can shoot really fast and so when I was sitting here thinking you know I need a defensive gun that if a bear charges me I can go pow 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 just unleashing as many rounds or in the cylinders as possible as fast as possible and this gun for me it does that really well better than a single action and better than most double actions in my opinion I really like the Smith & Wesson 629 slash 29 family another selling point for me to the 29 family is really that Smith & Wesson was the first one to really come out with these kind of combat double action magnums so the 357 and the 44 of course this is a 29 so they're only in 44 magnum but basically the same premises to their 357 too but they are really well made and they're really well put together firearms i mean you can see on this firearm all these years later like i said it's an 80s firearm no play in the cylinder really nothing you know that wouldn't be expected the gas check on this thing is still very tight it takes you to have to shine a flashlight on the other side to see any gap between the gas check and the cylinder I mean once again I something that I love about these Smith & Wessons these older Smith & Wessons is it shows that they were put together really well because all these years later you know that's now going on 40 years later for this firearm and the gas check cylinder you know meat is still just as tight as it was when it left factory so that kind of thing really speaks to the quality that was put into these firearms and why i chose one so why i chose 44 now this is a really interesting topic i'm going to keep it brief and the reason why i chose 44 magnum it goes back to a kind of old topic and discussion about air rifles and why certain people myself included like to shoot animals with larger calibered air rifles the reality is and i have killed quite a few small game animals with a 17 caliber uh, air rifle but the biggest thing is the smaller the caliber you go or the less power you have behind your bullet 
the closer you're going to have to shoot to the vitals of the animal that you're shooting at. And when I'm being charged by a bear, I always think of the worst case scenario because that's ultimately why we carry these guns. Ultimately, if you can get the drop on the bear and you can shoot it before it even knows you're there, you can probably kill it with a nine mil because the shock alone will help add to your surprise attack killing that bear. However, if you have a pissed off mama bear that wants to defend her cub and you've come in between the two and that mama bear wants to rip you to pieces and it's charging you at 30 miles an hour, you will not have the time to get right on the vitals, shoot it right perfectly through the heart, through the lungs, you know, and get that best optimal ideal shot. So when it comes to those types of situations, when you're just downright being charged and you need a round that will just thump that bear as hard as it can, that's why I choose the 44. One of the things I like about the personal round that I chose, which I'll show you guys, the round that's in the cylinder, I'm not gonna mess with for you guys, but it is this round here. As you guys can see, it is the Buffalo Bore Heavy 44, and as you guys should be able to see, it is a, uh, or sorry, 270 grains, going 1450 feet per second in around 1260 uh, foot-pounds of kinetic energy. So a very strong round that's easily double what a 10 mil or 45 would produce, even a plus P load. So that just means that, you know, if you shoot them just outside, if you're still hitting them in the chest, but you're not hitting them in the lungs, say you're hitting them in other less vital organs, you're still slowing that bear down. You're still doing a lot of internal damage. And in fact, this round is rated to go a minimum of two feet into the animal that you shoot. So it's going very far. It's not stopping. It's just penetrating and that's what I really like and that's what you ultimately really want. So that's the gun. Last thing I want to touch on is the fact that I did also want a six inch barrel. I like the six inch barrel more than a seven or an eight and more than a four or a three or anything like that because I feel like a six inch barrel is just long enough to let your 44 magnums build up that speed and push out of that barrel going 1400 feet per second. Covering up the gun just for a brief second I wanted to show you guys what exact holster and this is very subject to change in all honesty but uh, the holster I'm using for this gun it's nothing fancy or nothing special it just really is one of those things that it's what I have and it's what I'm using and it's effective enough to get the job done. So what you guys see here is a uh, Outbags, that's the brand name of them, uh, drop leg holster for revolver. And so it just sits on my leg as you guys have seen throughout this video, I'm sure. It sits down on my leg and I like that drop leg uh, style of holster for the fact that one of the biggest advantages in my opinion is that it gets it off my hip so that it's a lot easier to draw, especially in different situations, like say you're kneeling down, or say you're on horseback, or say you're you know doing something that's a little bit out of norm. Uh, what, what I found is in these different types of outdoor situations, it can be harder to draw a gun that's on your hip uh, because of the way that you're angled or the way you're positioned. However, it can be a lot easier to draw from the drop leg and I really do like carrying something, especially this big, lower down on my leg because I find that it's not uh, not very hard. It's a lot easier for me to carry, especially for a long period of time if it's not, uh, you know, like right on my hip or on my shoulder. And I do love cross draw shoulder holsters too. But my biggest issue with them, especially being a bushcrafter, as you guys know, we pack out with pretty big backpacks. So sometimes carrying a revolver, you know, right under your armpit or on your shoulder or even, you know, in front of you kind of, you know, at a cross draw is a very hard uh, thing to do because your backpack and your pack straps can interfere with it. So that's the particular um holster I use. It's a very inexpensive holster. It's not my favorite. I'm, I'm probably going to get a better drop leg holster, but it's kind of one of those things that, you know, you use what you got. And honestly, this thing, I mean, it's made in America. It's stitched pretty well and it just works. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things that if it's not broke, don't fix it. So that's my holster. And lastly, guys, as I catch my breath here, I just want to share the last thing about calibers. There's a lot of dogma to them. And there's a lot of this, that, and this is the best. It's just going to kill bears. At the end of the day, 
I will say guns, just like bear spray, are only a deterrent and may work. There's no guaranteed surefire way to kill every single bear in every single encounter. So anyways, guys, that's all I have to say finishing this video. I'm out, guys. God bless.